these days, your crowning glory could be synthetic, but it can look so real, it'll turn heads. To make a custom wig, a wig master measures the client's head from all angles because heads come in many shapes and sizes. He wraps her head in cellophane, twisting it just under the earlobes. Next, he sticks filament tape all over the cellophane wrap. He layers it four times to make a cast. He lifts the tape and cellophane cast from her head and places it on a wig block, a head shape made of canvas or wood. Using a grease pencil, he traces around the cast, making a pattern of the client's hairline on the wig block. The wig master then cuts pieces of plain blue paper. He pins it on the wig block within the pattern lines. The paper will prevent light from reflecting into his eyes as he works. Now he places a large-sized polyester and cotton lace on the block and cuts it to the penciled outline. He pins a finer lace from front to back, pleating the edges with pins. He pulls open a drawer full of real and fake hair, and it's hard to tell the difference between them. He chooses a tail of synthetic hair labeled Venetian Blonde. Pieces of pink and orange synthetic hair will be blended into the Venetian Blonde tresses to create dramatic highlights. This is the tool for the job. It's a giant comb with rows of sharp steel teeth. It's called a hackle. The wig master places the Venetian Blonde synthetic hair between the teeth of the hackle and sets the bright pink and orange locks on top. Now he repeatedly drags the hair through the hackle. He loses some strands in the comb, but those are usually the weaker ones. This is called hackling, and the action gets progressively more vigorous. He twists and twirls the tail as he pulls it through the hackle. This is actually dangerous work. One wrong move, and he could pierce his hand on the barbed comb. Once the hair is blended, he cuts it in two. Then he presses the hair into little metal pins on a leather holding card. The pins on a top card interlock with the bottom one. He pulls hair out of the holding cards a few strands at a time. With a small needle that looks like a fishing hook, he knots the strands into the lace, beginning at the nape. This is called ventilating. It's very similar to rug hooking. In fact, it may be why toupees are often referred to as rugs. Ventilating is labor intensive. He spends a minimum of 50 hours knotting the thousands of strands that it takes to make a wig. Partway into the job, he combs out any tangles and flounces the hair to make sure it moves naturally. Wigs for film and TV are usually made by hand rather than machine because the result is more authentic looking. Because the camera tells all, the wigs need to look as real as possible. He weaves the front of the wig one strand at a time because the front hairline always gets the most scrutiny. Now it's time for the fitting and the transformation. The wig needs a little styling. And he trims the ends. He cuts away the extra lace and voila! She's ready to let her synthetic hair down and get into her new role.